So the global economy is slowing down and the worst hit is the Eurozone. This is the world's third biggest economy and its fall is going to be painful for the entire world. The moment Europe was cut away from Russian gas, this outcome was very predictable. It was inescapable. It's not just a recession that's coming but true economic stagnation where the rest of the world will pull ahead but Europe will be left behind. Now back in January, Olaf Scholz, he told the world that Germany would not fall into recession. That was premature. That was before the double whammy of higher energy prices and interest rates. Fast forward to today, Europe's biggest economy is on a one-way train to recession hell. In our lead story today, German business activity slump suggests the recession is well underway. Business activity in Germany contracted for a fourth straight month in October as manufacturing slump was matched by a decline in services. But it gets worse. The German PMI fell to 45.8 in October. This is well below the overly optimistic 46.7 forecast all those big big economies in their fancy suits are saying. What's surprising is now services are also declining, not just manufacturing. And this tells us that local German consumers are getting hammered. They just don't have the money to spend anymore. Their spending power is coming down. Now what's really concerning is this contagion effect. This isn't just isolated to Germany. Yes, they are impacted the most by this energy crisis. Remember, Nord Stream blew up. But the UK and Europe as a whole, they are all doomed as well. However, not all of Europe is suffering. In a report by Reuters, Russia's Gazprom will be supplying extra gas to Hungary through the coming winter. And this is one country that didn't break any supply agreements with Russia because they know the truth. The truth that an economy survives on cheap energy. Russia will be supplying Hungary with gas above the contractual limits, which means the country will very easily get through this winter. But for the rest of Europe, it's going to be a coin flip if they'll survive the cold. According to the Hungarian foreign minister, the security of Hungary's energy supply requires uninterrupted transportation of gas, oil and nuclear fuel. And he drops another truth bomb that Europe still doesn't understand. To meet these three conditions, Hungarian-Russian energy cooperation must be uninterrupted. It has nothing to do with political preferences. And by now, we understand the EU's position to turn down Russian gas. But there will be consequences that will destroy their economy as winter approaches. We are now facing two wars and the big threat of an energy disruption in the Middle East is getting real. It's no longer a joke with all the escalations erupting almost daily. And if this manifests, the biggest loser won't be the US, it won't be China. The world's top two economies will be fine, but for Europe, it will be a financial disaster. And this economic pain is being felt really hard in the UK. Rishi Sunak has warned that a UK recession might be coming in 2024, but reports are looking really bleak and this economic slowdown might already be underway. It might already be starting in the fourth quarter this year. The UK is losing jobs at the sharpest pace since the pandemic. This crash reveals that labour market conditions are actually tighter than previously thought. This is the problem when you combine a global slowdown with higher interest rates. The entire global economy runs on cheap credit and when that stops, consumers stop buying stuff. That causes a domino effect that ends with people losing their jobs. According to the ONS, employment fell by 82,000 jobs in the three-month period from June to August. That's after another 130k drop from May through July. This is nine months in a row of employment declines. We might be at the beginning of a longer spree of job losses. And that will bring us back to the 2020 stretch just after the lockdowns. Unemployment or job losses is a lagging indicator. It's one of the final dominoes to fall which indicates the economy has been doing badly for quite some time. It's a confirmation of whatever we know. And in a normal situation, the central banks will step in and they'll try to cut rates. The central planners will slam down the cost of borrowing so that everyone has money to spend. People can start spending on credit, companies can borrow money to hire people and the business cycle just continues. But no, nope, the Bank of England isn't doing that. In fact, they are keeping interest rates higher for longer. The BOE is expected to hold interest rates at 5.25% and this is even after the horrible jobs report. Unemployment has risen to 4.2% but rates aren't coming down. In fact, borrowing costs in the UK are hitting new record highs. 
the 30-year guild has surged to 5.21%, and this is the highest since the summer of 1998. It's even higher than the 30-year treasury. This is the government rate, which means businesses and people are borrowing well above 5.2% as well. However, the Bank of England doesn't have a choice because there's still an inflation crisis going on. Out of the entire G7 bunch, the UK's inflation is the highest. Compared to the US or the EU, inflation in the UK is still out of control. It has been at 6.7% for two months straight because energy prices are rebounding. If energy prices stay high in October and November, there's a very good chance that the Bank of England might be forced to hike even higher. To really crush inflation, interest rates need to be higher than the CPI. Rates in the UK are at around 5.25%, but inflation is at 6.7%. There's still this big gap between them. The British consumer is effectively in limbo. On one hand, their buying power is draining away from high inflation. And on the other hand, they can't afford to swipe their credit cards, nor where interest rates are still sky high and credit is tight. So it shouldn't be a surprise that consumer sentiment is crashing and the fall is already building well before the Christmas season. In a survey by KPMG, more than a third of consumers plan to cut back on their holiday shopping and it is across the board. We are talking about presents, food and drinks, including dining out. Consumers are cutting back. Spending is going to come down which isn't good for the British economy. So brace tight because there's more pain to come. But let's zoom out and focus on the entire of Europe now because it's not just the UK that's in trouble, but the Europeans as well. The Eurozone ages closer to recession on slowing business activity. The PMI has dropped to a three-year low, well below the estimates. And once again, this decline is driven by the demand for services dropping. The PMI is a leading indicator of an economy. Whenever it dips below 50, economic activity starts to contract and the GDP follows the trend down. The longer it stays below 50, the higher the odds of GDP going negative over time, aka a recession. We have the perfect recipe for that today and this is what happens when you let the inflation genie out of the bottle. You get an artificial boom fueled by inflation and the only way to solve this is by deflation through a recession. Now the ECB has signaled an end to the rate hikes in September but there are two forces we must be aware that could push borrowing costs even higher. Guys, it's all about liquidity. This modern economy is driven by it. If credit gets too expensive, no one's going to borrow and that drives consumption down to the dirt. And what do we have? The ECB is now warning that more rate hikes are still possible if new shocks emerge. And I kind of think that the Middle East crisis counts as a potential new shock. If anything happens to the supply of energy there, inflation will spike and the ECB might be forced to do the unthinkable they might jack interest rates up again. And according to the bank, if additional shocks come, if the information we have proves to be incorrect, we may have to hike another time or perhaps two times. In other words, they are clueless, their crystal ball isn't working, and they are playing it by ear. So we have to focus on the Middle East. Yes, even if you're just an investor, you must pay attention. This is the world's biggest hotspot that's about to explode. And there's also another problem. The ECB is now under pressure to shrink their 1.7 trillion euro pile of bonds. The bonds were bought back during the 2020 lockdowns. If the ECB sells these bonds, they will be flooding the market with a new supply that will drive bond yields up. But if they don't, then they will be rolling over the bonds and reinvesting back at higher interest rates. This is a classic catch-22. You either pile up more debt or you risk higher bond yields collapsing your economy. It's the devil's deal. And the pressure is starting to build and whether things implode or not all depends on the Middle East crisis. And let's have a reality check on the situation because there are a ton of things that can go wrong and that will spike oil prices even higher. We know the ground offensive is delayed. Reports are saying that America is rushing defense systems into the region to deter Iran. So nothing is cancelled. This is likely a pause before things escalate even further. We also have Blinken warning Iran of a decisive response if Americans are attacked, by which he probably means US soldiers, US troops across the Middle East. This is an ominous warning. If something does happen, US will hold Iran accountable for strikes by its proxies as well. Whether that is going after Iranian oil or counter-attack, we have no idea yet. And this sets the stage for the chaos we have in the Middle East. What we have now, what we are seeing, is probably just a reprieve the calm before the storm. 
I pray for peace that nothing really happens, but we must also prepare for the worst. We also know the importance of the Strait of Hormuz. We have been talking about it a ton of times over the last few videos. It is a shipping lane in the Middle East that is controlled by Iran. They hold seven of the eight islands there. This is where things get crazier. An Iranian lawmaker has warned that Tehran might actually close the Strait of Hormuz if the US intervenes. How credible this is, I have no idea. But it is a card on the table that we can't ignore. If the strait gets compromised, energy shipments to Europe will stop. Even if it just gets delayed, it will be a disaster. And let's focus on the economics here. Because Russian gas is gone, Europe has to import LNG. And they get a ton of fuel from Qatar, which is in the heart of the Middle East. Qatar just signed a 27-year LNG supply deal with Spain, for example. They are also supplying EU countries like France and Germany with gas. However, there's one small problem. Just take a look at the location of Qatar. It is located just before the Strait of Hormuz, which means it is vulnerable to any supply chain disruptions. And the shipments from Qatar to the world have to pass through this narrow strait. If there's a blockade or Iran shuts it down, it is essentially game over for energy prices. Qatar exports almost all of their LNG through the strait. In fact, 20% of global LNG flows transit through that choke point alone. If the strait gets blockaded for any reason at all, there goes Europe's LNG supply from the Middle East. So it's important to keep an eye on this. If anything happens here, Europe will likely crash into a recession. And that could trigger a domino effect across the global economy. And I think the true test of Europe's resilience will come this winter because there's still one final headwind that not many people are factoring in. And it is a big one. What if Russia weaponizes gas supplies and cuts production again? Or maybe they just cut supply directly to the Eurozone? Okay, now many of you might be confused. Isn't the EU supposed to be energy independent from Putin? Well, not really. They are importing as much LNG today as before. Business is still booming. And check this out. In the first half of 2023, Russia exported 8.6 million tons of LNG to Europe. That's down only 1% from the same period a year back. The dependence on Moscow for energy is still there. Russia today still supplies at least 10% of Europe's LNG needs. This is significant enough if the supply suddenly gets cut. Remember that energy demand is inelastic. If supply gets shut down, demand doesn't just automatically collapse, right? You will have to be filled at a much higher price. You still need gas to heat homes and to power industries. You still need to generate electricity. We're not saying that Europe won't get their energy needs met. They will definitely find an alternative supply. What we are saying is that they'll pay much more for LNG, which will spike inflation even higher. And it'll likely come from the United States. The US exported the most amount of LNG in the first half of 2023, over 11.6 billion cubic feet a day. The majority of the flows goes to Europe. It goes to countries like Germany, France, and the UK but they also send LNG to places like China, South Korea, and Japan. So if a supply shock happens, they can simply divert shipments to Asia away. They'll simply redirect them to Europe because prices there are now higher than before, higher than Asia, basic supply and demand. In essence, Europe's fate is tied together with the Middle East. If things escalate out of control there, Europe might be the first biggest economy to enter a deep recession. So the EU is in a tough spot. Interest rates can't go any higher without collapsing the system. But if energy prices spike, there's little choice but to go higher for longer. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Can the EU escape a recession? Is the UK economy slipping into one as well? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.